Member for Chilliwack, Kent. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. As we know, later this week, we will be marking International Women's Day. This day uh, is to honour the many women, girls, two-spirit people, non-binary people in our province who are so often the cornerstones of our family, neighbourhoods and communities. BC has a long history of incredible people who are making change in our society. People who fight sexism, gender-based discrimination, harassment and violence every day. From well-known public figures to ordinary people working quietly behind the scenes, these trailblazers are breaking barriers, standing up for change, and fighting for the rights of all people. I'm proud to be working with so many women and girls who make an impact every day towards making life better in our province. With this in mind, I would, it would be difficult to discuss equity and access for women, girls, two-spirit, and non-binary people without acknowledging the need to support bodily autonomy and today I rise to discuss reproductive rights specifically. It has been less than a year since the conversation about reproductive rights was changed by the reversing of Roe v. Wade in the United States, a case where the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 1973 that the U.S. Constitution protects the liberty to choose to have an abortion for its people. Now, I know that we are in Canada, of course, that we are in British Columbia, specifically where Roe v. Wade was not the case that set our foundation but it is undeniable that our news, conversations, parts of our culture, even sometimes our understanding of the world around us and issues here in Canada are heavily impacted, if not influenced, by media, politics, and issues from the United States. Here in Canada, we have R. V. Morgenthaler from 1988. In the case of Morgenthaler, the Supreme Court of Canada held that abortion provisions in the Criminal Code was unconstitutional because it violated women's rights under Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms to Security of Person. Since this ruling, there have been no criminal laws on abortion in Canada. The decision sounds a little familiar, right? This was 35 years ago in Canada, even longer than that in the US, but the conversation, the fight for bodily autonomy and making medical decisions is still front and center. We see and we hear it every single day. Honorable Speaker, abortion is health care. It is health care for those who could be pregnant, whose bodies are at the center of the decision. We are watching since the reversal of Roe v. Wade, different states making laws or tabling bills that would criminalize women for abortions, criminalize medical practitioners for offering medical care, jailing, threatening those who would choose to exercise their bodily autonomy. Now, Honourable Speaker, there has always been a question of different levels of accessibility. But now, more than ever, I know so many of us here in Canada are watching in horror. Honourable Speaker, I have had the privilege to hear from many people in my community and in our province about the experiences with choice, with access, and even the decision to access abortion care. I have heard fear and sadness. I've heard hope and frustration. I've heard about being me made to feel shame and embarrassment, loneliness. I have heard about where it has saved lives, where it has saved families, and where there was support and love. Each story is different, each story is individual, and each choice belongs to no one but the person who is making it. We are all in this chamber, and we have many roles. Here, we are representatives for our community, but that's not all we are. For myself, I am the MLA for Chilliwack Kent, but also a daughter, a mother, a partner. Those things are linked to everything I do. Honourable Speaker, I bring this up because as a woman whose right to reproductive decisions sometimes feels like it's up for public debate in our current climate, one of the moments as a member of this legislature that I continue to think about happened less than a year ago. Right here, and the cognitive dissonance still impacts my thinking. I know others who walk these halls might be familiar with this as well. Last May, there was a protest on the front lawn. An anti-abortion group was here, and as was their right, they were protesting to draw attention to the issue of abortion, and their message was that abortion should not be allowed, should be illegal. As a woman, a person who could be pregnant, that I couldn't be trusted. It should be governments or courts who decide, not the person who is pregnant. Honourable Speaker, it was not the first time I've seen this or heard this. I don't live under a rock. Uh, but this time it was different, and I'll try to describe why. That day I walked in this building, I sat in this chamber, where we debate and vote on the laws of British Columbia. As an MLA, I am elected and entrusted, empowered by an, a community 
to use my vote to make decisions that will impact my neighbours, my community and my province, where my vote on issues to our collective future is meant to be equal to all the other votes in this room. And still at the same time on the front lawn, as a woman, as someone who could be pregnant, I felt reduced to a uterus and not to be trusted to make decisions about my body. I am not to be allowed if the beliefs of the protesting group were to be entertained. What continues to loop in my mind is that if this experience can have such a lasting impact for myself, who has access and support and is so privileged to be in this room with so much information, what impact must the rhetoric, the stories, the debate over reproductive rights be having on another who may be feeling isolated, terrified and alone? This is why we must support re reproductive rights so that information, support, options and treatment can be open and accessible. Here in BC, abortion is healthcare, and I'd like to share some information with everyone. The majority of abortions are medical abortions. This means a medication, Mifigamizo, is used to produce abortion. Since 2016-17, the number of abortions accessed has, in has increased by 39%, while the dependence on surgical abortions has decreased by almost 50%. The medication is available by telehealth and dispensed by community pharmacies throughout the province. Anyone seeking a medical abortion with this medication should call 811 to find out the best way to access it. Emergency abortions are performed at hospitals in every region of our province. However, for those who want or need to schedule a routine surgical abortion, there are approximately 30 sites providing abortion services in BC. These sites are not all disclosed to protect the privacy and safety of healthcare staff and patients. Let's just take a minute on that. No matter where you live, there is support available from the province to ensure you can access abortion. Honourable Speaker, we can't be silent. We must be clear in our support for reproductive rights. I hope that we can all speak together in one voice on this topic today. Access to contraceptives is a right. Abortion is health care.